Hello, this is Off to Battle, and I'm doing a video on the Nurgle Kugath Plague Cauldron. And just full disclosure, I'm suffering from my own plague in terms of pine allergies, and uh, so if there are any weird skips, that's probably why. So we begin with the base plagues, and this is what you can use at turn 1, provided you have enough infections. Because that's your resource used for creating the plagues themselves. So you have pox and uh, a pox on the as they say and for each of these is a set one you'll get infections plus five whenever a plague is spread but that's a consolation prize you do not earn infections as a net result of spreading plague as a rule you just benefit from it's basically cash back you also get plus two nurgle corruption but that doesn't do you any good if you already have a hundred nurgle corruption so this is mostly a factor for enemy provinces so the reason you use Pox is mainly because you want to use it on your own provinces. It does have the minus one for infrastructure buildings. And infrastructure buildings would be your basic revenue ones. Here we go, the microbial bog. So this generates income, it generates growth. And it provides a little bit of garrison. And it also provides nurglings as it cycles through. So in other words, this would be minus one in terms of the time this would need to get to the next part of the cycle, if it had pox on it. But the point of pox is, even at turn one, if you can actually get pox, well, obviously on turn one you won't have four settlements, but in your starting province, even to get four settlements, pox, 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 and that would be plus 100 growth. So that's where you start. For Bubos, this is your basic plague for dealing with armies under siege. Because once you have this going in the region, then any army under siege will take 35% more attrition. And that's armies under siege. That's not garrisons. Anyway, you also get the plus 5 infections, the plus 2 neural corruption. AU is your basic attrition causing plague. And besides the usual stuff, and minus 25% campaign movement range. All units suffer attrition regardless of whether they are in friendly territory or even in a friendly settlement. So that means that an enemy that is half damaged, that goes into a settlement and expects to get, let's say, 40% of the unit back for a net total of 90% health by the next turn, it will get nothing of that. It will also suffer a tiny bit of attrition. It's probably not going to be enough to satisfy you without other add-ons, but they won't get the casualty punishment. They won't get the healing, and that's very important. Now, Rot is the exception because instead of infections, infections cash back, you get one Nurgling unit in the summoning pool. So once you start spreading lots of Rot, you get the ability to have one Lord and 19 Nurglings all over the place. Now, you probably can't afford to do that, or you can't afford to do that much, but you can and you can really overwhelm some places just by doing it. Especially as Kugath, since your Nurglings start out at 80% strength rather than something like 40% strength. And Palsy is your debuff plague. It gives minus 4 melee attack to an enemy army, and that's something that you can do right out the gate. Now, the reason you have base plagues is partly the advancement system and partly because you have to start somewhere. So we call these base plagues because they're the ones that you start with, and by using them, you unlock things in row number 1, 2, and 3. That's not the case for number 4. Number 4, these are things that you have to unlock in the tech tree. So things like Sores here. Things like Fester, Contagious Horde here, that gives you Pistolet. So these are the ones that are in the uh, fourth line. So you have Highly Contagious, Pistolet, Fester. So let's go over these in detail, because this is what's known as custom plagues. You have these, and you choose symptoms from this part, rather than using the recipes, which are basically the super plagues that you unlock through playing the game, and through using base plagues a certain number of times, and so on. Highly contagious. This symptom raises the chance of a plague spreading by 20%. So that's very important, because you start with a plague chance of spreading, which is pretty garbage but which gets a lot better because back in the tech tree, you'll see things like, let me get a good example, Blood Bowl out here. Uh, so besides the part where it gives Blood Bowl to the great unclean ones, you get a chance of plague spreading plus 4%. That's blanket, that's faction-wide, that's army, that's settlement as far as I know. 
So, you unlock these and you get a better chance, but in the meantime, you get things like these. So, Highly Contagious is a part of your custom plague arsenal. And a big, big key is Pustulant, because it raises the plague duration by three turns. So, I'll show you what you can do with Igu, like this. So, Pustulant, plus three turns, Highly Contagious, plus 20%. I need to use a play cultist for this. Now, I can use this to infect this caravan. 100% chance of success. You never fail doing this with a play cultist because he's there to martyr himself for the cause. There we go. Martyred. So, for five turns instead of two, this army is suffering from attrition. And it will suffer from attrition wherever weird places that it goes because caravans move at super speed. So, it's going to suffer attrition and it's also, if it goes way over here, it'll have a chance of spreading the plague to here. To Imrik's Fortress. Etc. Etc. So, I'm not saying that uh, infecting caravans is necessarily a plan, but... It was close to one of my settlements, so it, very, it was very easy to show for this video. So the point is that instead of ha suffering attrition for two turns, which isn't a very long time, it'll suffer that for five. So if it was a damaged army that went into a settlement, then it would still suffer attrition, and it might not be much attrition, but it will still suffer that attrition instead of having casualty or punishment. So festering, this is simply to raise the amount of corruption uh, that you would get from each time that is spread. With the base plagues, you will see that you get plus two corruption. So with festering, you would get plus six corruption on top of that. So you get plus eight corruption, which is a lot of corruption at one time. With fever, you get a total of 150 favor each time the plague is spread. Now this is whether it's to your own settlements, whether it's to your own armies, whether it's to enemy forces. But the thing is that 150 is not a lot in the late game. 150 is an awful lot in the early game. So, there are cases where you have more infections than you do favor. So, you just slap this on, and it goes with something that you are going to do anyway. And then you have sores that decreases casualty replenishment rate by 7%. Now, Bubos already does this 7%, so you would get this, and it would double. And this would apply to uh, armies that are not suffering attrition but they will still get a casualty replenishment rate debuff, which is good, uh, but that's very situational. So now in terms of the symptoms, and the, the thing is, the way it's arranged, you'd have to use Pox five times in order to unlock this, the Bleeding Ears. You'd have to use it 25 times to unlock Violent Spasms, and you'd have to use it 50 times to unlock Proxism. So I'll go over these like this. So Bleeding Ears, it gives plus 6 control for your settlements, minus 6 control for the other guy's settlements. Very simple. Violent Spasms, it gives a cycle time of minus 1 for basic military buildings. And that's the sort of buildings that give you plague barrels, for instance. Chance of a plague spreading, plus 5%, that's good. Paroxysm, this, it has effects only on non nurgle settlements, and reduces their local recruitment capacity by 2 in their local province. So note here that it says local province. Let's pretend that this was an enemy province. Let's say that we had paroxysm here, 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 and all the way down here. That means that in this enemy province, which we're pretending is enemy, the local recruitment capacity would be minus 8. Why does this matter? This matters because of here, the green pots. And I've mentioned this in prior videos, and it's amazing. And it's amazing in part because... You don't just get the 50 growth. You don't just get the chance of a plague spreading plus 15%. Uh, and the plague duration is quite high and all that. But this involves the symptoms as well. So in other words, this 50% stacks with the plus 25% you get from normal pots. And then you get paroxysm on top of that. And apparently it also reduces base weapon damage by 15% for non noble armies, which is uh, just a bonus. But the point is that if this is active on our home province, and I've done this, here, 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 and way down here. 75, 150, 225, 300 is legit 
plus 300 growth. Which I don't really need, because everything is maxed out. But if I did need it, I could get this up to plus 300 growth per turn, just from the plagues alone. And that is the power of green piles. So, the thing about the Bubos is that you only get the casualty replenishment minus 7% in the armies in the region and attrition minus 35% when under siege armies in the region if it is a non nurgle settlement that has been infected. So it's not whether it's on the enemy army, it's not whether it's on your army, it's only if the settlement hasn't, which gets rid. In contrast, this pestilence one has to be put on the enemy army, but that adds another minus 35% when under siege. I mean, if you had the settlement that had this, and the army that had this, then it would stack. But that's complicated. So besides that, you have the inflamed glands, that's defensive supplies, minus 50, uh, minus 500. Which is useful if you're rushing a settlement, but otherwise it's not. Now, gut rot, minus 40% ammunition, it is very useful against any kind of faction that has archers in it of any kind. Uh, but it basically just lowers the amount of time until everything is just fighting in the streets in melee, which is good for you. And this is the key component of unlocking Black Plague. And Black Plague, what it does for you, the usual stuff, but with Plague Duration plus 5 turns, increases numerical corruption, chance of Plague spreading, blah blah blah, income from sacking and looting settlements plus 100%. And this has to be in one of your armies. On the enemy's Settlements, it'll do the base Bubo's stuff. So, minus 7% casualty replenishment, 35% more attrition when under siege if the settlement is infected. If the army is infected, then you get minus 40% ammunition during siege battles, and then you have range minus 10% and accuracy minus 20%, which is all great, but it has to be on the army. But the main thing is, if you have Black Plague on an army like this, and then it takes this settlement, you see here that, if I can get it to hold there, 14,559 fate. So that would be in, that would be about 29,000 favor if I had Black Plague on Kugath. Now, while I could auto resolve this, it's not going to work out like I would like, and that's because there's a plague on this army that's different from the Black Plague that I have with Kugath. Which is unfortunate, but whatever, I don't need the money that badly in this campaign. That's not the point. It's that if you want the money, you should have Black Plague only operating within your theater of operations. You want Black Plague on the settlement, you want Black Plague on the hero, uh, excuse me, the lore. You just want to have Black Plague without any kind of interference, because once you do battle with this army and defeat it, you'll get whatever plague it has. So that's an issue to worry about. But AQ is definitely useful, and like I said, anything that's taking attrition is not getting casualty replenishment, which is my main concern for a lot of situations. Now, Limb Blight, it's very simple, it's a debuff, speed minus 10% for infantry, it's great, wonderful. The Flux is a key thing, because attrition, when this is affecting an enemy army, rather than settlement, the attrition on the army is 50% more than it would have otherwise been. So, an army that has the Flux, Ague, and Pestilence, because this has to be put on the army, then for the turns that this lasts, it would be suffering attrition under siege because of this plague, and then an extra 35%, and then an extra 50% on top of that. However, then it's only two turns. So often what I'm doing, if I'm putting the Flux, I am also putting Pustulant, so that it lasts longer. And then I can take my time with a Siege, and I don't care if it takes a while. In fact, I don't even need to be Sieging for the army to be suffering attrition damage. Yes, it'll suffer more if I'm Sieging, but it'll still suffer damage if I'm just sitting outside somewhere. And what you get in the third line is Mucus Runs, and this provides Vanguard Deployment for all units in your army, but then the plague has to be on your army for this to actually operate. Which brings us to the super plague. The crumbling ague. And this is 
ridiculously powerful. So with all the usual benefits we're familiar with, it provides the Vanguard deployment to all units in your army. It also has character experience per turn plus 100, casualty replenishment rate plus 35% for you. And in addition, it also causes enemy armies that get this to suffer attrition, minus 25 campaign movement range, and an additional plus 35% attrition when under siege. So it's good if it's on the enemy too, but it's mainly used to buff yourself. And in that, it's really good. Now, with Rot, the whole reason for doing this is basically to buff yourself also. Because Rot here, you get more Nurglings, which is you know, a good in and of itself. Then you get the Weeping Eyes, and this is what creates the range minus 10, accuracy minus 20 for non-Nurgle armies that we saw in a previous Super Flick. The recipes. So, this is great for if you're fighting High Elves, Cafe, those sorts of factions. It's just wonderful. You want this on. Necrotizing Flesh it gives you Infections plus 5 when Plague is spread. Now, normally you're not going to use this with Raw itself, but if you put Ague and you get plus 5 Infections anyway, then you add Necrotizing Flesh and you get, get just, you know, more. You get 10 Infections cash back rather than 5. Well, fine, you can do that if you think that it's actually going to spread. Now, here we go, constant vomiting, and this allows to summon plague bearers twice per battle from, you know, the realms of chaos. That's it, that's what it does. But it's a really good ability, so you would like to have this, but this has to be an infection on your own arm. So that's something to consider. Now, the super plague associated with this is the Nurgle's Rot Heal. And you get the usual stuff here, but then you can get the summoning ability in the middle of battle. And moreover, very importantly, you get physical resistance 20% for your entire army. And since you start with 20% physical resistance for all your Nurgling demons, that means that your Plague Bearers, your Nurglings, your Great and Clean Ones, they will now have 40 physical resistance. That can be really good. And it can be utterly meaningless in cases where the enemy has lots of magical attack, like other demon factions. Anyway, the point is that against armies that don't have a lot of magical attack, but have lots of other ways to hurt you, this extra 20% physical resistance is really good, and you should want it. It's the only meaningful way that you can really buff yourself if you're going into the quest battle for Kugath. Finally, we have Palsy, and this is purely for debuffing an enemy army. So, Brain Fog gives base weapon damage minus 15%, which is great and wonderful, and you really want that. And I've used this on even as basics as something as an Ogre army, because they're all coming in for melee, very few missile units in that army, so it's all going to be in my face weapon damage. So, minus 15% is going to stack with all the poison that every single Nurgle unit is bringing. So you are, in effect, getting minus 30% weapon damage from every unit that you're fighting in melee in that battle. The Sweats does the same thing to Missile Strength, except it's by minus 20%, which is, again, uh, let's say you have this and the Weeping Eyes, and you're going up against the Cafe Army. So Missile Strength minus 20%, Range minus 10%, Accuracy minus 20%. They're going to hate you. I mean, they're going to hate you even more, which is good. Here we go with Acrid Flatulence. And it's, uh, I mean, the names. Armor minus 40%, which is quite something in itself. And getting armor that low definitely helps you because you have a lot of units that are not armor piercing and that really want that armor brought down. So that's something that you really would like. And finally, finally, you get the Grim Shakes. So you get all the usual benefits. You get plus six control for your settlements, minus six control on the other guy's settlements. And then, on the other side's army, you get minus 4 to melee attack, okay, minus 40% armor, yeah, yeah, we want that, minus 50% spell resistance. In other words, your spells will now do 50% more in that battle against the army that's infected. Not garrisons, but armies. It's still really powerful, and against the right stuff, this will just completely obliterate them, combined with your blight boils and so on. So, those are the plagues, and the bottom line is, 
you really do want to get these recipes unlocked. They are extremely powerful. If you need any growth at all, you want the green pots. So this is just amazing for your side. You can just do it indiscriminately. Getting more money is good. Getting more casualty replenishment is good. And plus, the, I mean, the whole thing about army-wide vanguard deployment. Nurgle's Rot with the physical resistance, the summon from beyond, which can really help. And then the Grim Shakes, which is just the ultimate debuff for just uh, magical bombardment. You're, you're making Kairos jealous at this point. But when it comes down to it, often you'll just be using Agu, jacking up the turns, jacking up the uh, uh, attrition suffered, and then it's halfway decent attrition, and it'll last for five turns. And you can do stuff like that with all sorts of stuff. The plus three turns is a really big deal. Other ways of raising the duration would be things like just Nurgle Corruption in a given province. But this is pretty much what you need to know about taking this, going out in campaign, and wrecking face. Uh, so, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, take care, have fun out there, spreading Grandfather's gifts. And hopefully I'll have a few less of his gifts with the allergies, but that's fine. Take care.